great mother speaks. I am great mother, holy spirit, yin, divine mother, cosmic moon, deep space, the moon, dark matter, the void, the black hole, Atar, Isis, Diana, Mami, Ishtar, Kali, Mammy, and Mother Mary. Well, welcome to Great Mother Speaks. I'm Tammy Taylor, your manifestation muse, and today... You know, when you're learning an entirely different culture and you don't speak the language, there's a surrender to knowing there's a limitation to how much you're going to actually be able to absorb. Because the nature of learning and the authenticity of integrating the information is compromised. And so... As a result, you just make a truce with yourself that I'm going to get out of this what I need to get out of this. And that is the truth that I've made with myself with Vedic Astrology. And I, so I say that because it's timely with this Pisces full moon and Shadabisha Nakshatra. I always remember Shada Beach, Shad Nakshatri, because Nakshatri, see, there we go. It's different culture, different language, and, you know, struggling to pronounce and everything. But spirit always gives us what we need. And what I need is to remember the essential elemental truth of these constellations. There are 27 of them. Shada Bisha is at the end of Aquarius and the beginning of Pisces. And so we're in a Pisces full moon in both the Western and the Vedic. But it's important in the Vedic to look at the nakshatras, particularly when we are talking about the moon. It's a lunar astrology, and these are lunar based constellations. I always remember uh, Shada Bisha because when I first heard it, it sounded to me like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, those of you who are raised in the Baptist tradition like I was, you might recall who they are. They were the three wise brothers who would not bow down to the king of Babylon. And they were rewarded as a result. This is a great planetary fear at this time to stand in one's truth of their divinity. And this nakshatra is such a powerful one because it speaks to the reward for doing so. And if you recall, you know, um, they ended up being really high respected officials of Babylon because their God was leading them through all the trials and tribulations of not bound down to this king. And everybody was like, what? He's going to kill you. He, he threw them into a fiery furnace. You know, he didn't just throw them in jail or he didn't just, you know, um, you know, have a death sentence where they were killed in some, you know, way, you know, that everybody could watch and be, you know, even put on a cross like Jesus Christ. He threw them in a furnace and Jesus came and walked them out. And so, <laughs> you know, all of this, you know, we understand as mythology because we are so deep into what Great Mother says is the, and in and, and translation from, from the Vedas too, is called, uh, you know, the sea of forgetfulness. It is not a judgment or condemnation. We came into this world for a reason. We are under the veil of forgetfulness for a reason. Forgetfulness of what? Of our divinity in order for us to learn how to use our power. You know, as a as a good parent, you know, you give your child, you know, a little leash a little bit at a time as they demonstrate their ability to maintain their lives. You know, as long as they're safe, well, you know, then we, we can loosen up a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And that's how we grow. It's the same thing with us as above, so below. So um, this nakshatra is all about feeling that power and we're in an age where we're being so blessed with so many powerful downloads that if you are not in tune with your divinity it's freaking people out it's freaking people out and so they're using it in different ways for example we were talking about an MDT support group about how all of the mass murders and things that are going on, 
it's it's really about a confusion that people are having internally. It has nothing to do with the external world. That's our first impulse is to externalize everything that's happening. Oh, it's because of this, it's because of politics, it's because of that. No, 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 no. All war begins within. And the inner war is... As Great Mother, through the Great Mother Speaks Oracle deck, guides us through a rebirth and a regeneration of our divinity, through the release of MDT identity, the shame, blame, and guilt of the abandonment and abuse of our, of our birth mothers, we have to, as individuals, undergo this internal rebirth. And what is rebirth? You know, rebirth is a death of the old self. And so just like everything else, instead of sitting with that, we go into addiction, which is just another word for pain avoidance. We go into drug addiction, sex addiction, or just addiction to trying to control others, which the ultimate expression of that is murderous behavior, whether it is through the spoken word or through action, which we can also use as a very powerful, loving tool, action and the spoken word to uplift and to encourage through the signs and symbols, just as the signs and symbols through this Vedic astrology, whether I understand Hindu or I understand Sanskrit or not, spirit is going to give me what it needs to give me in order to use me as a vehicle to speak to whoever needs to hear what it need what it what it's saying. For those who do want to go through this rebirthing process and going through the fire. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, they had to prove to themselves that they were worthy to rule Babylon. They were just humble believers in God. And that's what is meant by the meek shall inherit the earth. The humility goes through an experience of gaining the wisdom of knowing that it has a value to the world. And that's what this transition from the Piscean age of the Christ consciousness into the Aquarian age, which is about embodying the Christ consciousness as individuals. We live Christ consciousness as individuals. We live what he taught as individuals. In other words, we dance to the beat of our own drum, just like he did. He just showed us an example of how he did it. How he embraced his divinity and believed in his God, despite the um, what they call them, the uh, Sadducees, the, the 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 Pharisees, and the Sadducees were against him. The high priests were against him and his teaching of the, the great Father, and so. We are coming into that and great mother, father, God are injecting us and the planet with the power to do it. But if we don't know what we're being injected with, we are interpreting it as fear because we are so filled with fear due to this sea of forgetfulness that we're in that has got us in this addiction to external manifestation of great mother, father, God, as opposed to the internal. So this is all about us connecting with that during this season. The full moon is in Pisces in both the Western and in the Vedic astrology. And as we know, Pisces is the teetering, tottering slope that we walk between delusion and enlightenment, between self-deception and self-awareness. The Leo New Moon Great Mother did an extended introduction about what this season leading up to January 2020 is all about. So if you want to check that out, there is a link in the information box below. This full moon, Great Mother wants to bring our attention to the Vedic aspect of the season with this full moon in Pisces, in the Vedic and in the Western. Now, what's interesting is that in the Vedic astrology, Neptune, as opposed to in the Western astrology, being in Pisces at this time, creating a great deal of delusionment and difficulty with that dance, with awareness. In the soul astrology, are the 
cosmic astrology as opposed to the geocentric, earth-centric ego astrology that is basically the tropical astrology that's focused on our egoic experience, our ego reaction to life. In the soul astrology, we're actually looking at how, why, when, and for what purpose the soul incarnated. Neptune here is in Aquarius, and so this period of time has to do with what the collective consciousness is undergoing in terms of its internal dance between illusion and awareness around humanity, around what it wants to collectively contribute on a soul level to this transitional phase between the Piscean age and the Aquarian age. This is why this particular period is so intense. So what Great Mother wants to focus on in this introduction to your full moon Pisces reading is the idea that you, from a soul perspective, are looking toward the future at this particular time, or you're looking in the past at this particular time, at yourself, at your experience at this particular time, and you're either saying, wow, I am really living up to my greatest soul potential at this time to free myself from the bondage, from the attachment to forgetfulness, forgetfulness of my divinity, forgetfulness of my soul essence, forgetfulness of my birthright to be happy, healthy, and whole. I am releasing myself from that forgetfulness. I'm doing my level best as a conscious being to do that. Or I am overwhelmed by the challenges of doing that. And either way, Great Mother is inviting us to receive the eternal grace and mercy that is available to us, particularly as the planet is experiencing the disorder of mama drama trauma, which this channel focuses on to heal. Mama drama trauma being that condition in which the mother projects unhealed aspects of herself onto the child causing emotional and or physical trauma. And in cases where she's unwilling, unable, and unavailable, she may have transitioned to heal her own MDT. Loving detachment is necessary for the child to live a happy, healthy, and whole life. In other words, for us to fully embrace our birthright to be happy, healthy, and whole. Living in loving detachment is necessary to do that. So the Great Mother Speaks Oracle deck was channeled for us to have a daily practice of releasing ourselves from that bondage of attachment to the toxic mama experience, the forgetfulness that the drama engenders about our divinity and the trauma that we experience as a result, the dissociative experience from our soul that keeps us in bondage. So the opportunity this full moon is to, from the tropical perspective, look at the harvest of the year. This has been a very intense year with Saturn and Jupiter in retrograde and the eclipses that we've had in the most powerful in Vedic astrology nodal position of Gemini in the North Node and Sagittarius in the South because it has to do with that human intelligence of the ego in the North Node evolving through awareness and the release of old attachments to old ways of connecting with the divinity, with that Sagittarius in the South, based on experience. Wisdom is based on experience, what we learn 
through our own experience, as opposed to the intelligence of Mercury, which rules Gemini, that is based on an ability, an ego ability to figure things out. And so they work well together when understood. But when wisdom is held as the greater virtue, then we actually are evolving. We actually are growing. And so with Sagittarius being in the South Node, conjunct Saturn, conjunct Pluto, we have this opportunity to do a tremendous amount of release of old spiritual beliefs and practices that no longer work for us, such as toxic beliefs about sin, the idea that we are separate from God. That is a very old religious teaching. And it no longer serves us as we move into an Aquarian age that is about being very clear about our divinity. Now, speaking of clarity about divinity, not everyone survives deity initiation. And that is what we're talking about. Let us be clear. We are talking about divinity initiation. An initiation into a conscious ego-soul alignment. So this full moon is an illumination with regard to where you are with that. Great Mother wants you to be very clear about where you are in relationship to that in relationship to your soul and what your soul wants to do at this particular time about that in your life as it relates to mama drama trauma, the foundation of all relationships in your life. In our relationships, just like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, who is the poster child of mama drama trauma, each card is based on a scene in the Wizard of Oz along that yellow brick road journey, that hero's journey to embracing our divinity that journey, that rites of passage to deity initiation. Because, of course, when we return home, we return to peace. We return to our true self. So this return to self requires a rebirth. It requires this dark night of the soul, which for us, being mama drama trauma, most of the planet, most people won't admit it. Um, It is a taboo subject. But during the Aquarian age, it will become more and more prominent as an issue to be addressed. Um, There's a reason there's an increase in suicides. There's a reason there's an increase in drug addiction. All of these are just forms of pain avoidance. And this is what is meant by not everyone survives deity initiation. Many people do not believe because they do not know that they're divine beings. They think because of the attachment to forgetfulness, attachment to the illusion of this experience, and we incarnate into this material experience in order to have the veil over our eyes, as Dorothy had the veil, the believing that Oz was the god of all gods, until she took the witch's broom, which taught her that she had the power to take her power back from an idea of an externalized God. Great Mother, Father, God is us within us. And this is a scary thought for a culture from a, a planetary collective consciousness that believes it's separate from God. That's a scary thought let alone something to integrate into one's consciousness. So we are what the Christ called a peculiar people. We know that we are in this world, but we are not of it. And so this is a little spoken word that is um, payment and homage to what Great Mother is inviting us to do in terms of looking at this placement of where we are, consciousness ascends and consciousness It forgets, you know, we evolve, you know, the kundalini awakens and the kundalini goes to sleep. We are living, breathing beings who we have periods of active conscious awareness and growth and periods of rest and fallowness, just like the soil. So that's why we learn first and foremost about our divinity identity, that we are 
dearly loved children of the great mother, father, God, who were never judged, condemned for that. Because just like the seasons, it's just like saying, you know, in the northern hemisphere, we're, you know, slowly moving into fall, although the planet is heating up and is on fire and all of these things that are happening because of our forgetfulness. There's no judgment or condemnation. There is awareness. There's a difference. And it's a very important distinction to make. There is awareness that what we're doing is either fortifying the experience of our divinity or it is detracting from it. And we get to make the free will choice. Some say, and particularly in Vedic astrology, that we do not have free will. But it is said within the context, I would hope, I understand the belief of no free will within the context of we are given the choice in our experience. We get to experience making choices so that we know if we choose to go into the direction of what does not reinforce our divinity, such as burning down the rainforest and therefore setting our entire environmental equilibrium off is not beneficial. We get to experience that so that we learn it. Again, wisdom being the hallmark of divinity. We learn through experience, which is why we're not judged or condemned. It doesn't make sense to uh, believe in a God that judges and condemns you for coming here to have experience. How can you have experience if you don't get to choose? So, In this life, we do get to choose. It's just that in the arc of eternity, there is just one consciousness, and that is the consciousness of love, and that is what they're talking about. And and since it's difficult for most people to even grasp what is being discussed here, they just go ahead and jump to the end of the story that there is no free will. It's all, you know, love. But step by step, Yes, within lifetimes, that's how we gain experience. That's how we gain wisdom about what love is. We have to learn it through experience. Great Mother's inviting us to recognize at this particular stage in our lives with this Pisces full moon in both the Western and in the Vedic, what we are choosing. Are we choosing to go away from our divinity, feeling and experiencing being dearly loved, never judged or condemned or left alone? Or are we continuing to engender those experiences such as mama drama trauma in particular here with your full moon reading that you are detracting from that experience? Which one is it? Because Within this season, there are a lot of transits that are being discussed. And one specifically with the Vedic, just like Great Mother in her extended introduction, with the Pluto Saturn conjunction in the Western astrology that is that has captured the imagination of astrologers. In the Vedic astrology, we are having the Gemini move into from Purnavasu into Ardra Nakshatra and we're having Sagittarius move into Mula which is the center of the cosmos it's the nakshatra that is the center it's the heart the cosmic heart of the cosmos it is great mother it is the primordial womb And so the primordial womb is going to receive for us what we are willing, ready, and able to release. And so that's why Great Mother is wanting us to know at this particular time, those of us who are working with releasing mama drama trauma, the blame, shame, and guilt, feeling the cause, feeling that we can cure, feeling that somehow we can control mama drama trauma, and releasing all of that dysfunction is going to be tremendously supported, especially as we have in November, uh, Jupiter uh, moving into Sagittarius as well. So lots and lots of cosmic support for us. The spoken word that I would like to share with you is this. Child, mother, father, teacher, parent, scholar, A pence, a pound, a dollar, a month, a day, 
an hour. Years, decades, scores, work, hobbies, chores, a house, a window, a door, beginning, middle, end, whole, half, empty, physiology, biology, anatomy, plant, seed, soil, sun, rain, earth, the planetary galactic search, Olmec, Toltec, Aztec, Cholula, Pyramid, Sphinx, Ego, soul, spirit, the initiation, communication, conduit. Maya 2012, the whole world, in, to, it. Crazy, sane, normal, casual, everyday, formal. The known, unknown, and unknowable. Mystery, intrigue, certainty. Past, present, future. Galaxy, planet, light year. Stellar procession, sacred, man, woman, offspring, bound, insecure, free, breakfast, lunch, dinner, night, noon, morning, sacred, science, faith, time, space, location, you are blessed, wanted, needed. Breathe, inspire, intention, purpose, reason. Cave, hut, house, master, worker, slave. Moon, star, sun, three, two, one. Eternal divine self, present, future, past. First, late, last. Dawn, day, sunset. And these are your Pisces. Shatabisha. Full Moon Readings. Gemini Moon Sign people. I'm seeing a lot of second chakra energy for you. You have four orange cards and a 15 card spread here. Great Mother speaking to you through the second chakra, this full moon. The second chakra is ruled by Jupiter, which does rule um, Sagittarius, which is your K2 to your Rahu. So you are in the North Node right now. The North Node is really the destiny point for the collective consciousness on the planet right now in Vedic astrology in the western it's Cancer and Capricorns in the south but in the Vedic Sagittarius is in the south and so that's more of kind of a fated kind of energy um, so when we're talking about destiny and fate and Great Mother is pointing to the importance of distinguishing between self-judgment and self-awareness in looking at the second chakra that rules Sagittarius, I would say over the next month or so, what this is saying is that you need to really pay attention to that self voice, your how you're speaking to yourself, your inner dialogue as it relates to critical thinking about what needs to be released in your life because you're coming into your own in your shadow position you may not realize or if you do you may not uh, desire to share with others that in the law of ego form manifestation there's a real sense of you coming into your own about how you feel about moving forward in your life as a result of releasing what it is that you need to release and up until you make a conscious decision about what your true desires are that's what the second chakra is root chakra is tribal conditioning second chakra is what you desire to create in your life and you're coming into your own about that you are doing so as a result of owning your your beauty owning your your voice and so that's why your inner dialogue is so important we have fifth chakra energy here with Nefertiti 
owning your beauty <clears throat> is about being and speaking our truth. This is fifth chakra energy ruled by Mercury. Mercury rules Gemini. So off the bat, she's saying that first and foremost, your desires moving forward, what you want in your life is what's important, specifically as it relates to mama drama trauma, taking others out of the equation and getting really clear about what that is, not in a self-critical way, but in a way that honors your awareness about your journey, where you are, what you need and where you need to go. This movement forward is not just about you, which is why there may be a tendency to be self-critical. <clears throat> Up until the recent past, you have been learning that unless you own your voice, you aren't going to be able to move forward. And some of you have been moving forward because of a sense of self-compassion. You've become more self-compassionate with this heart energy and you've become more open to accepting others in your life who are supportive of you, who are appreciative of you and your voice and your values and where you're wanting to go in your life. So it's not just about you. It's about how you are doing relationship now, how you are creating relationships in your life moving forward, not based on MDT, blame, shame, and guilt, or feeling that perhaps you're the burden. Sometimes we can design our lives in such a way that we don't burden others when what we're really wanting is to connect with others. So you see there's a difference in focus there. When we create our lives as a result of MDT, shame, blame, and guilt, shame, blame, and guilt is based on feeling that we are burdens. We're not wanted. Um, you know, what we have to say is not valued. And so there's always this kind of performance factor, this proving, this worthiness factor. This heart chakra energy is saying that you've gotten to a place where you have compassion with yourself about that. You're really not feeling so much of that anymore. But Great Mother is cautioning that as you move into this fifth chakra and owning and speaking your peace, being and speaking your peace, that you use the collective conscious energy of Rahu in the North Node. The North Node is all about where our soul is evolving. And collectively, your North Node, South Node is, is in your birth chart individually. Uniquely, we all have our own. But collectively on the planet right now, Rahu is in Gemini, in your moon sign. And so there's a movement toward this critical analysis is very clear thinking especially with the nakshatra that Rahu is in right now Purnavasu <clears throat> Rahu is moving into Ardra by the end of the month which is a very intense nakshatra its symbol is the teardrop it, it's very destructive it's very clarifying it is the epitome of the dual symbol of gemini it is the destruction that's necessary and the chaos that's necessary to distinguish between the two and that's what you're doing and so planetarily that's what we're doing on the planet there are lines being drawn in the sand right now and it will um, climax over the next few months and that's what Great Mother's message was the Leo New Moon about that introduction you might want to check that out to kind of what she's talking about that's more kind of from the Western perspective perspective from the Vedic perspective it's more about really getting in touch with this internal space and revisiting your own voice which is what great mother is saying to your own desires not filtering them through others and their needs and their perceptions whether you know it's being a burden or um, modifying your behavior to get likes on social media or whatever from a Vedic perspective, the transition that's happening now into 2020 is all about 
getting in touch with that internal space in very real ways that um, bring us back to a true self aligned divinity, which is what Great Mother Speaks is all about. So <clears throat> I hope that's clear for you because presently the second chakra energy first quarter moon Rihanna and self-doubt is around this issue and so she's coming through letting you know that that's why you might have this sense of not really knowing how to move forward not really knowing what you want or knowing what you want and knowing how to move forward but questioning yourself there's a lot of supportive energy for you Gemini to fulfill your desires and you are fully expected to do that with all of this supportive energy. And you, on a very deep soul level, are expecting to do it here with the law of mystery and divine order. On a soul level, with a yang symbol, we're always looking at this very grounded root chakra energy of soul purpose. So... Spirituality and self-love are the two components of the MDT soul contract. We have MDT in order to evolve in self-love and spiritual independence. And so this is really what you're about right now. This is really what you're doing. This is really what has meaning for you. And you're expecting to move forward more focused in that direction. The dance that you're doing is with pleasure. You are feeling a sense of following your bliss as opposed to running away in fear. This is a really, really good reading for you because if you have second chakra energy, the best focus is to be following your bliss. And doing that dance is all about, again, that awareness of not being self-critical, that I'm running away from situations or people that don't allow me to be and speak myself, speak my truth. But I am, in fact, following my bliss toward opportunities that do allow me to do that. Not that things have to be created for me to do that, all that, although I can do that as a divine child. I can create opportunities for myself. I also have the power to perceive difficult circumstances as opportunities to be and speak my truth. Challenges such that will come up with many of these transits that are amplifying these energies happening in your moon sign. Uh, November 3rd, we have Jupiter actually moving into Sagittarius from Scorpio and the Vedic. And so amplifying again this nodal axis that's very active in your moon sign. Hidden influences that are supporting you are those of Ishel, waxing gibbous moon energy, shame, blame, and guilt. So when we're looking at Ishel, the Mayan goddess of fertility, of creativity, of self-healing, what we're looking at is your desire to heal those things. And again, there's a real kind of a conscious sense of your ego form, the body that you've incarnated in aligning with the purpose of its soul manifestation, the MDT soul contract to evolve in self-love and spiritual independence. And so that is why MDT is a blessing is because without the shame, blame and guilt, again, this hidden influence that's showing up here in your reading without this hidden influence of MDT, shame, blame and guilt, feeling the burden, feeling unwanted, rejected, dejected, abandoned and abused. We don't have the opportunity to learn that we have everything that we need already. If you are already unconditionally loved, then you really don't know the value of being unconditionally loved, if that makes sense. When we understand the value of being unconditionally loved, then we pay attention 
more to ourselves, our thoughts and our behaviors, as well as those of others with more compassion, with more nurturing, with more respect. It's not that we can't. You know, all of us are unique beings and some people have evolved to that point where they are incarnated in families where they experience unconditional love. And due to their soul experience, they really do appreciate it because they have had many lifetimes with MDT themselves, you know, so we can't just look at people and and just judge. That's why the cosmic calculus looking at the actual birth chart is so important. We all have our strengths and weaknesses in our wheelhouses, so to speak, quote unquote. So this particular wheelhouse of the mother, this particular wheelhouse of the moon, looking at the house that your moon is in actually is really, really important. And right now for Gemini with this energy for you being in your 10th house with this Pisces full moon, you may be experiencing some things in the work area related to shame, blame, and guilt. And so a hidden influence for you there would be an opportunity to look at where you might feel that your needs, your concerns are perceived as too burdensome in the workplace or that, um, what you want, maybe you want uh, payment or, uh, you know, what what you get paid to be more. And that's a, perceived as too much of, of a burden for the company or, you know, you want to look at where this shame, blame and guilt is showing up as an influence in your life right now in order for you to distinguish between whether you are colluding with this self-judgment or you're using it as an opportunity to be more aware of how it is assisting you to align more with your self-love and spiritual independence. This is the work and this is the work that I do with clients, you know, on a weekly basis and in the MDT support group is really, really paying attention to this perceptual shift of letting go of the mother we want in order to accept the one that we have. And this mother shows up in all of our relationships, in our family, in our spouses, in our children and at work. The center card you have here is processing. And what you, what you're expecting is to process all of this. You are very aware, Gemini Moon sign people, that you are processing a lot right now and you are distinguishing between the two. So you're letting go of a lot of the old toxic ways of MDT, shame, blame, and guilt. And so this reading is very, very timely for you. The processing gut chakra card is ruled by Mars and <clears throat> excuse me, this energy is really asking you to really become clear as great mother is emphasizing here between what your desires are and maybe what some things may be um, projected upon you that you don't want to take forward again, really activating that self-compassion and owning your beauty being and speaking your truth in the let go position is yemiya so surrender so this is what you're doing <clears throat> you're doing this for many of you it seems like this might just be a confirmation of what you're doing and you may not have realized it or really articulated in the way that great mother is coming through this reading that you are in this process of some of you letting addictions go uh, as they say in Al-Anon Al letting old people places and things go that no longer support where you are in healing the wounds of abandonment and abuse. You are arresting those patterns in your life by surrendering to a higher power. And that's what great mother is within us. That still small voice of the Holy Spirit surrendering to its guidance, your angels, your guides, and your ancestors to support you in your journey. Your advice from great mother is the practice of self inquiry. Self inquiry is all about asking yourself, is it true? You know, asking yourself when you are uh, being made to feel that something is too much or you may not be deserving of that raise or whatever example that you are actually 
checking in with yourself and saying, you know, is it true? Is it true that I'm asking for for too much? You know, get your facts, get your information about your uh, job, about what you do to determine that. Um, Self-inquiry is also about whether someone has the right to determine whether or not you're lovable. Remember the principles of divinity identity is knowing that we are dearly loved divine children of the great mother, father, God, first and foremost, who are never judged, condemned, or left alone. So self-inquiry is also asking yourself when you're not feeling loved, when you are feeling judged, condemned, and left alone, Am, am I really in this situation? Does this person really have the power? Is it a valid thought? Because remember, our emotions are what we think about our feelings. And so checking what you're thinking is self-inquiry. Just because this job isn't paying me what I'm worth, does that mean that they are condemning me? That they are judging me? Again, what are the facts here? Do they really not have the money? Or in this industry, my skill set is just valued at this. Getting to the reality of things by taking charge of the emotion is the advice that Great Mother is giving you, Gemini. And you have the ability to do that. It's just a matter of refocusing that intelligence in a productive way. And since you're already on this productive path, this is the guidance that she's giving you to do that. In the immediate future, you are going to be emancipated from these um, remnants, these chains from the past through your own divine power and resulting peace. You know, emancipation is the E in aspire. P is the processing. So you have two um, major arcana cards from Aspire, which are the six grieving steps of the mother that we want to accept the one that we have. And you have the major arcana law card of ego form and manifestation. So great mother is really coming through and she's saying that you are in the final stages of really releasing a great deal of toxicity and self-inquiry is going to help you go the rest of the way. Now you want to embody in this process, Gemini moon sign people, an energy of Baba Yaga, the wild woman energy. You want to just go for it. You don't want to second guess yourself. And as um, the Rahu node moves into Ardra, that will not be a challenge for you at all. (laughs) Ardra is about it. You will find yourself saying things before you realize. And of course, Baba Yaga energy is new moon, fifth chakra energy. Again, being and speaking your truth, that higher will of the fifth chakra. Sometimes people mistakenly, um, when I do readings and I'm working with Ardra Nakshatra energy, um, sometimes people will say things like, um, it was just a Freudian slip. I didn't mean to say this. And, it, and it's, it's not at all uh, a, a Freudian slip. Um, Freudian slip is, is a, a lot of times people get it confused. Freud meant that when these things come out, you, de- you do mean it. You just didn't want it to come out. <laughs> You know, a lot of times people say Freudian slip and they really are trying to say, um, I didn't mean it and I, you know, and it came out. No, that's something else. Freudian slip is it's something that you did mean and you, you didn't want it to come out. You wanted to come out with this Baba Yaga wild woman energy and Nefertiti fifth chakra energy owning your beauty. You want to be and speak your truth with awareness, not with self criticism, condemnation or judgment or condemnation or judgment of other people either as with the job analogy with with the um, raise the facts please and Ardra energy is really going to help you with that over the next several months now the possible outcome is that it ends up being a situation and being and speaking your truth that is produced and it's totally unexpected. So 
in pursuing the facts, you find out that in actuality, your skill set is valued, but it's at a different position. Maybe in a different part of town or a different part of the country. But you would have to be promoted or something like that. Um, and so that's what Mayat, the justice card, is about. The Egyptian goddess of the scales that holds the heart on one side of the scale and a feather on the other. And so that's that truth. That's that justice that comes through when you get to the light of the reality of the situation. And you are facing a challenge with that kind of searing intelligence of the third eye. This beautiful purple lavender third eye color that you have with the other third eye card of emancipation. This is very possible that um, an unexpected end to what you're currently dealing with will occur occur in your favor as a result of doing this processing work because the long-term card is the Moses learning to live the law there is an alignment of ego soul that's occurring those of you who may be suffering from anxiety or dealing with nervous issues this is going to heal it's going to heal from your gut chakra it's going to heal from the, all of this emotional processing there's just a lot of raw and loose wires right now that are going to be let go of in this process of self-inquiry and challenging every uh, toxic thought of shame blame and guilt that comes into your space um as your practice of purification. And as a result, your outcome is Sophia, the Heart Chakra New Moon card. You have two new three new moon cards here. Of course, the second chakra Hatar Pleasure Principle, following your bliss, Baba Yaga, the wild woman, fifth chakra energy, and you have Sophia here, heart chakra energy. Very balanced energies here, Gemini, for you. This is what Great Mother meant by there's so much energetic support for you. Inner wisdom is all about honoring that inner voice, that intuition in your journey moving forward, which is exactly what you're doing this full moon. It's coming to light in ways that it hasn't before. And hopefully Great Mother has given you the insight that you need to distinguish between how to use your tremendous intelligence and emotional uh, insight to um continue on your ego soul alignment journey in ways that serve you and serve others by becoming more aware, more self-compassionate as opposed to uh, judgmental uh, and critical because that is definitely a potential for most of us now with all of the energies that are going on. You just have more of an emotional intelligence and more of a capacity to really hone in and use these energies to your benefit because Gemini is in Rahu and you have so much second chakra energy to follow your bliss remember great mother loves you thanks so much for listening and I do too great mother speaks. I am great mother holy spirit yin divine mother cosmic moon deep space